Well, he's been a former home minister, a former finance minister, one of the, the biggest leaders in the Congress party. He's had a very big role in uh, drafting the manifesto of the Congress as well. Peter Damram joins us. Thanks very much uh, uh, for being with us. It's been a hectic uh, election campaign for you. You've been up and uh, about uh, uh, and leading the Congress charge in a sense in Tamil Nadu. Uh, we'll talk about Tamil Nadu in a moment, sir. But I just wanted to get your views on the the alliance, as it were. If you look at the BJP, they are fighting in 77 of 102 constituencies with their allies, right? Wherever they are not fighting, their allies are. But if you look at the India bloc, uh, there are 114 candidates in 102 seats. In other words, 11 of these 102 seats has more than one India candidate. Therefore, the question I'm asking is, um, it's not, you know, I mean, the alliance itself seems to be pro running into some sort of problems, right? If you've got not-so-friendly contests or even friendly contests. Not correct. Your uh, inferences are not right. BJP is the big brother. The big brother carries a big stick. And therefore, it browbeats its so-called allies into submission and it garners most of the seats. For example, in Tamil Nadu, who is this ally? Uh, it's only the PMK, yes. which is a significant party in about um, eight or nine seats out of 39. The rest are insignificant parties. But the Congress is an alliance in Tamil Nadu with a bigger party, namely the DMK. It's an alliance with... Um, the RJD in Bihar, which is admittedly a bigger party. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to understand the realities of the states in which uh, these 102 states lie. Uh, if you look at Rajasthan, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, you will find that the Congress plays a bigger role. So don't compare one alliance with another alliance. So would you say that the Congress... Uh has compromised or would you say that the Congress has been accommodative of uh, aspirations of regional players? Congress has recognized the reality of the ground situation. As I said, there are X number of states where the Congress is the dominant party. In fact, it is the only party which is opposing the BJP. In other states, there is a regional party which is a bigger player. We acknowledge that reality and allow the bigger player to take the lead. I have said this in several columns and several interviews over the last 12 months. Right. Mr. Chidambaram, um, you know, uh, the issue of electoral bonds has been brought up prominently by the Congress party over and over again. Amit Shah today said, and I've got a quote from him, in fact, this was in an interview to NDTV, he says, their parties, in other words, opposition parties, have also received donations through bonds. Is that extortion as well? Rahul Gandhi must tell people, yes, we have also uh, extorted. And the donation that they have received in proportion to the number of MPs is more than what we got, is what Amit Shah says. How would you respond? This is the problem. Uh, you, you draw these uh, false comparisons. Firstly, the Congress is not in power in the center. It has not been in power for 10 years. Therefore, we cannot extort any money from anyone on the, on the basis of that we will do your favors or this is a repayment for past favors or advance payment for future favors. So there is no comparison at all. This comparison is completely odious, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we are a political party. We need to raise funds from the people, public, which also includes uh, rich corporates. If you close every other avenue, and the only avenue available is the electoral bond, what are we supposed to do? Uh, carrying a begging bowl and go around the country? That is the only avenue available to a political party. Therefore, we have to necessarily take that route what is the choice? Unless Mr. Amit Shah says, we alone can extort, all of you beg. Okay. Uh, my last question to you before I let you go, sir. Uh, Tamil Nadu, 
uh, and and the Siva Ganga, where exactly you are right now? How are you looking at this battle? Because uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kerala, these are the states which actually stood firmly against the Modi wave in 2014 and also 2019. What's happening in 2024, according to you? There is no battle here. The DMK led alliance, the India alliance in Tamil Nadu will win in all 39 seats of Tamil Nadu, as well as the lone seat in Puducherry. There is no battle here. You've got it wrong, Maria. There is a skirmish here. There are two players who are opposing us. The one has no party here. There is no party structure here. The, the other is an established party, the AIADMK. But the AIADMK has no stake in a Lok Sabha election unless it's takes, uh, it, it spells out its stand, whether it's for the BJP or against the BJP, for Mr. Narendra Modi or against Mr. Narendra Modi. The leader of the AIADMK refused to take that stand. Therefore, what is his role in this election? He has no stake in this election. He's, play, uh, he's uh, participating in this election only to preserve his um, cadre and make sure that this cadre votes for his party and his symbol. The, the big player is the DMK alliance, in which includes the Congress, and we will win all 39 seats. All right. A final question, sir, yes. to you. Sorry, Maria. Just, just one more quick yes. question since we have Mr. Chidambaram. Um, you know, in this first phase, 102 seats, last time around, the UPA uh, had actually done better than the NDA last time around, narrowly a couple of seats. How important is this entire chunk in the first phase uh, to to the Congress and the India Alliance now. Uh, you've had assembly poll victories, the Congress in Telangana and, and Karnataka. You have a strong alliance that you've spoken about. But in terms of your overall campaign, are you banking massively on Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Karnataka? Obviously, we are relying heavily on Tamil Nadu, which has 39 plus 140 seats. We are relying upon the Telangana seats and the Karnataka seats. Uh, a substantial chunk of seats in Telangana and uh, Karnataka are going to polls, had gone to polls today. If this is an important uh, phase for us and we will do extremely well in this phase. So you are essentially saying, uh, uh, Mr. Chidambaram, that uh, BJ, uh, BJP is focusing on Central India and, and the Hindi belt? Uh, while the Congress's, uh, you know, top focus has been these three states which are part of southern India. I am not aware of the situation in other states. I have been in Tamil Nadu for the last over a month. I can speak about what I have knowledge or information. You ask me the question whether we are relying upon the chunk of seats in Karnataka, Telangana and all the seats in Tamil Nadu and my answer is yes. Now, I don't know the situation in other states. I'm sure they're putting up a strong fight there. And what will be the result, I can't say. Because I'm told, uh, I don't have the list with me, I'm told that some seats in Maharashtra, some seats in Rajasthan, and some seats in Madhya Pradesh have gone to polls today. Yes. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know the ground situation. Sure. So all are right. you all relaxed now, Mr. Chidamram, all your work at least? campaigning in Tamil Nadu, everybody's voted, no no two phases, three phases. So, are you a relaxed person this evening? Are you done with your work for today? You look at my face, yeah. I'm always relaxed. I have no tension because I knew that we went into this election in Tamil Nadu that we will sweep. And I've said this even before the notification was published. Therefore, in Tamil Nadu, we are a formidable alliance. The AIDMK is a player with no stake, right. and the BP is an insignificant player. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed. Thank you.